Hello, and welcome to the Title 18 Word Crimes Podcast. I'm Eric Arneson. On this episode, we have two stories for you, both read by my partner in crime, Scott Detrow, a reporter for public radio station KQED in Sacramento, California. Up first, 12 Before 9, originally published by Shotgun Honey. 12 Before 9 by Eric Arneson, read by Scott Detrow. A well-dressed man carrying a leather briefcase was pacing on the sidewalk outside my used bookshop in Philly's Spring Garden neighborhood when I arrived this morning at 12 before 9. Half an hour later, he was inside, taking his sweet time browsing book after book. I hoped he'd make a purchase or just leave soon. I didn't usually have customers this early, and my decision to open on time for him meant I hadn't been able to grab breakfast at the diner across the street. Um, excuse me, he said finally, holding a well-worn hardcover. What do you make of, uh... The old man's nervous voice dropped to a whisper. Page 132. So that was his ankle. That's an interesting page, I replied. No emotion. The old man didn't look up from the book. Most people don't when they request my special services. I suppose they want to know as little about me as possible. When the silence got awkward, I asked, Would you like to make a purchase? (sighs) Yes, he said after a deep breath. He set the book down, almost dropping it from his shaking hands, then lifted his briefcase onto the counter and popped it open. He pulled out a very full, sealed manila envelope. Carefully avoiding eye contact, he handed it to me. I took the envelope. Will that be everything? The question surprised him, but he stammered. "Uh, Yes, yes, it's all in there, before closing his briefcase and scurrying off. I opened the envelope just enough to see the beautiful green of 250 crisp $100 bills and pull out a folded piece of paper. I slipped the paper into my shirt pocket and the envelope into the safe under the counter. Time to walk across the street for three cups of black coffee, two eggs over easy, and a buttered English muffin. Sitting in my normal booth, I unfolded the paper, which read Douglas Surlnick, Work, 600 Arch, Home, 2014 Spring Garden, Gray Lexus. AL953E2. All the information I needed, but that work address sounded familiar. Morning, Gloria, I said as the waitress poured my first cup of coffee. Hey, do you know what's in the building at 600 Arch Street? 600 Arch? You mean the IRS building? That's it, I nodded. Thanks. I should have given the old man a discount. That was Scott Detrow, reading 12 Before 9, originally published by Shotgun Honey. The second story on this episode is Blow Out the Candles, another one published by Shotgun Honey. This is a very short story. It started taking shape one night while I was driving home from work. At first, I thought it would be about four sentences long. It turned out to be a little longer than that, but not much. Blow Out the Candles, by Eric Arneson, read by Scott Detrow. Detective Peter Eckert looked down at the girl and shook his head. I know her, he said to his partner, Hannah Keene used to be in the youth group with Jess. Eckhart had met Hannah three years ago. She was 14, eyes bright and eager, ready for life's adventures. A couple days after Christmas the next year, he saw her loitering outside a convenience store, eyes glassy and addled and holding only a flicker of the spark he remembered. Eleven months later, she paced next to a bench in Monument Park on Lehman Street. Her vacant eyes served as foggy sentinels on the lookout for something, anything, that promised to satisfy her unquenchable craving. Now 17, eyes forever milky and dull, Hannah lay on the pavement next to a dumpster in an alley six blocks from her church. Eckert examined the fingers of her right hand, which formed a weak fist resting on her chest. He'd never know that her final instinct had been to clutch for the gold crucifix on her necklace, a necklace no longer there, because she had traded it for the speedball that took her life. That was Scott Detrow reading Blow Out the Candles, originally published by Shotgun Honey. Before I get to the credits for this episode, I want to talk about a couple other things, but don't panic. It's all related to crime fiction. First, the 2014 Edgar Award nominations were announced recently. Congratulations to all of the nominees, especially to Reed Farrell Coleman, whose short story The Terminal was nominated. It's from Otto Penzler's Quick Crimes Anthology. The other short story nominees are Max Allen Collins and Mickey Spillane for So Long Chief in The Strand, John Connolly for the Caxton Private Lending Library and Book Depository in the Mysterious Bookshop's Biblia Mysteries series, 
Trina Corey for There Are Roads in the Water in Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine, and Tim L. Williams for Where That Morning Sun Goes Down, also from Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine. Again, congratulations to all of the nominees. And moving to the world of full-length novels, I recently read A Land More Kind Than Home by Wiley Cash, and I give it a hearty recommendation. It's set in rural western North Carolina, a piece of the country where one side of my family has roots, and I think Cash does a fantastic job of evoking a strong sense of place throughout the novel. A Land More Kind Than Home by Wiley Cash. Okay, thanks again for listening to Title 18 Word Crimes. If you like the podcast, you can now subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher. And if you want to leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher, five stars preferred, that would be fantastic. You can find the voice behind the stories, Scott Detro, on Twitter at Scott, D-E-T-R-O-W, and at his website, scottdetro.com. Like I mentioned earlier, both stories featured on this episode were originally published by Shotgun Honey. You can find them online at shotgunhoney.net. Actually, I should say you can find us at shotgunhoney.net because I'm an editor for Shotgun Honey now. And we publish two or three flash fiction stories in the crime genre every week, so please check us out. And you can find me at ericarneson.com. That's E-R-I-K-A-R-N-E-S-O-N dot com. Every episode of the Word Crimes podcast is archived at ericarneson.com. I'm also at Eric Arneson on Twitter and pretty easy to find on Facebook. This is just the second episode of the podcast, so we're still getting our sea legs. If you have any comments, suggestions, criticisms, well, comments or suggestions, I'm all ears. Contact me at my website, on Twitter, on Facebook, whatever works for you. The music used on this episode is by The Throws. I also took the title Blow Out the Candles from them, although the song title is singular and the story title is plural. Uh, You can find The Throws online at thethrows.com. That's The Throws, T-H-R-O-E-S, The Throws. Com. And the concept for this podcast was inspired by the great Seth Harwood. If you're not familiar with his Crime Wave podcast, be sure to check it out at CrimeWave.com. That's CrimeWave.com. By the way, his latest book, In Broad Daylight, also worth checking out. It has a kick-ass female FBI agent, it's set in Alaska, and there's a serial killer on the loose. What's not to like? In Broad Daylight by Seth Harwood is available in ebook and paperback at Amazon, or you can get an audio version from patiobooks.com. All the links I just mentioned can be found on the podcast page at ericarneson.com. Thanks again for listening to Title 18 Word Crimes. We'll be back soon with more crime fiction for your listening pleasure. <laughs>